Hello and welcome to my tutorial where I will be walking you through how to paint a bird's nest using watercolors. To get started, you will need a pencil to sketch it out. I'm going to walk you through how I would sketch it out. Um, first things first, I would start with the eggs. So depending how many you want to have, I'm going to do three because I have three little babies in my house. We're going to start with one egg. And eggs tend to get smaller towards the top, so you don't have to have them all perfect. They don't all have to be exactly the same size. Nature is not in itself absolutely perfect. So having a little bit of difference among them is a good idea. So I just kind of loosely draw them out and if, if as I'm drawing them I make mistakes, you can always go back and make them a different shape. So using a white eraser, I'm just going to erase some of the lines that I don't want. So I don't like this bottom one. I actually want to make it just a little bit wider. So you want to keep your drawing as light as you can. Obviously you want to be able to see it so that you know where to keep the paint, but lighter is better. So we're going to draw a circle around the eggs now. And I'm going to draw a small circle that just kind of covers them. And this is sort of the inner part of the nest. And then the nest is going to go about this big. And the only reason I'm drawing this circle, it's not really necessary. I'm not going to stay within these lines. The reason I'm drawing it is because it helps me just have an idea of where it's going to begin and end. That's good. I want to have some parts a little wider back to what I said about nature not being perfect. You don't want to have it be even all the way around. All right, so once you've drawn it out and it looks similar to this, just some loose wavy lines, you have an idea of where your eggs are gonna go, you can start laying down color. So for colors, you just wanna have a variety of blues. I like to have a Prussian blue and a teal. Those are gonna be the ones I'm gonna use the most. And then I also have a Viridian green that I'm gonna to add touches of to this. And we're going to start by actually adding the color to the eggs. So I like to keep some clean water on hand as well as some dirtier water where I'll rinse the brush. So the clean water is what I use to add the first layer of paint. I start by adding clear water down first. And then using a little bit of teal, I'm actually just going to drop in some color. And because the page is all wet here, the teal is actually going to make its way in throughout the egg. And it doesn't have to be too perfect for this coat. You're really just trying to get some color down. And I'm going to let this set up a little bit and move on to the next egg. And because I don't want the eggs to bleed into each other, I'm actually going to leave a thin white line between them all that I will get rid of later. But for the sake of the first coat, I'm going to just leave that. And I'm gonna do the same pattern. So just adding a bit of teal. If you're cur curious about any of the colors I use, if you check out the uh, video description below, I do include links to some of the paints and products that I use in my paintings. If you don't already have your favorites. So I'm always using the tip of the brush. I like to use an angled brush because I'm always using the tip to add the detail, but then pulling in swaths of color using the wider angle. So here I just took the tip of the brush and I added Prussian blue. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. I'm wanting to indicate that there's a bit of light coming in on certain parts of the egg. And the only way to do that is by adding some shadows. So we're gonna to wanna to have some shadows here where the egg is kind of nestled in together. With the other eggs. And we'll add another coat on top of this where we'll get even more detail, but I just like to start adding the shadows a little bit. So same as before, I'm gonna go add clear water to these eggs. 
And if they do happen to touch together, your thin line isn't as thin as you'd like. And some of the color bleeds in, that's not a big deal. Especially with loose watercolor, it's not a big deal to have them bleeding together. And for this one, I'm gonna just add a bit more blue, more of the dark blue as it's drying. All right, so now I'm gonna come back to this egg and if it's still wet, you can actually go ahead and start adding more color down, which I'm gonna to try to do. So mine is still wet. If it's not, you'll have to re-wet it. But mine thankfully is. Depends how fast you work. So I'm trying to get a bit of a muddled appearance on the egg. Robin's eggs are seldom perfect. So you'll notice here, you'll see brush strokes. That just means that the paint has dried on the page. I'm gonna use some cerulean blue just to um, add a bit more here and just basically move your way around adding speckles to the egg. There's not really a lot of rhyme and reason to where I add more color, but I'm just wanting it to look kind of muddled, like I said. And so I'm gonna take a clean paper towel and I'm gonna actually lift up a little bit of color just on the center here have a little highlight so the sun is touching that egg. I'm going to add a little bit of the viridian green again. Not too much. And then mix that with that teal. Here's some Prussian blue that I can now butt up to that other egg. So now there is no thin line between the two. The second coat on this egg is where I want quite a bit of color. I'm not gonna be coming back and adding more most likely. We'll kind of see how it dries. I do a lot of that, just kind of figuring it out as I go. Watercolor tends to always dry darker than, or sorry, lighter. So sometimes you can think it looks perfect and then as it's drying, you realize it needs more. So while this is drying, I'm actually gonna go in and add a little bit of background. I think bringing in some of that blue into the background would look quite nice. I actually want a little bit of it to drip off the page, so we're gonna do that now because we can't add color right up against color or else it'll all bleed together. So using sort of lines as strokes, we're always kind of wanting to work in a circle. So I'm just kind of drawing around with clear water. It's hard to see on camera, but just keep your brush moving around. We're just gonna add a little bit of teal. It's the same color that you'll see in the egg. We will be going over this again, but this is just to have it reappear in the background. And I'm going to actually have this drip off the page. So what I do to have it drip off is I'll lift it up and then I just kind of add some more water to tell, tell it where to go.
I'm gonna throw in a tiny bit more green here, just some speckles. And then some blue speckles. This is the cerulean blue. Quite popular with popular color to buy. So if you're investing in different colors, cerulean blue is quite nice. It's very vivid. All right. So it looks like it's needing a bit more time to dry. So I'm just going to let that happen. And then uh, I'll come back and show you how to do the other eggs. All right. So now that this egg is dry, I actually want to add just a tiny bit more detail here. And this is up to you if you think it needs it, but I just want to add in little bit of detail around it with the Prussian blue just to really help define it and these lines aren't going to matter as far as adding the second coat so or sorry the the other eggs so you don't have to let it dry again so I just really want to indicate that this is a round egg all right so I'm happy with the way that one looks I want to go ahead and add this one so we're gonna have to re-wet it because like I said, if it dries, we do sometimes have to add more clear water. To get that second coat done. And for this one, I really wanna have a shine mark because it's over top of this one. So I'm gonna actually get rid of the water that I laid down there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add more teal in and around. For this one, I'm going to take the green again and I'm going to add some speckles. I'm just kind of moving the brush around, adding some texture. I feel like I got it a little bit dark here, so I'm actually going to lift out a little bit of that color. And in this case, the texture from the paper towel is actually kind of nice. I'm not being too careful about it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this egg, and I'm not going to worry too much about it touching this one. If I get some of the dark blue, I'm okay with that. So I'm adding a second coat. Clear water. And then I'm going to throw in more of the teal. Like here, I'm not adding it everywhere. I'm adding dots this time. And then I'm going to take some of the cerulean blue and add some texture here. And actually, I forgot to add some here, so I might just add a few. It's okay to jump around on the painting, it's completely normal. Add a little bit of the green. I'm getting so close to this egg, it looks as if it's touching. And then I'm going to take Prussian blue, and same as before, I'm just going to contour it a little bit to help define it from the edge. Quite a bit of shadowing here. I feel like that would be normal to have shadowing where it meets the center of the nest. And then what I'm going to do, while all of these have a bit of brightness to them, I'm going to add some splatters. So I add splatters using a flat brush like this and just tapping the brush. And you can use two hands to do that. Do a little bit of blue and these spots where it's wet will bleed together and where it's not you'll really see them so i'm happy with how those turned out i think we're going to let them dry completely before we go in and add the nest now just so that they don't bleed into the nest at all so now that the eggs are completely dry there's just a few areas where i just want to add a little bit more detail just a little bit of texture using a fine brush because I love to have those spots that you see on eggs. Not too much. Just 
just add a few here and there. Definitely not consistently because they wouldn't be. So that's good. We'll leave those to dry now. So now we're going to do the nest around it. So with this part, you want it to be fairly messy. You're just going to be keeping a pattern of consistently going around, always having your brush strokes go in a circular motion. So we'll start by filling in this little spot in the center. I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre in there. That's all I'm gonna do for here. Might add a little bit of black in there too, actually. I'll use the Payne's Gray just because it wouldn't be too bright in the center. So if, when it's still wet, if you add, throw in a little Payne's Gray there, it's actually gonna make its way in and then it'll just be left with a tiny bit of um, yellow left over. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna be using um, a raw umber for this nest and a little bit of the yellow ochre. So I'm gonna start same as before. I'm gonna basically add the center part of the nest isn't gonna have any light showing through. We're gonna make our way around. I'm gonna take some of the raw umber and I'm actually just gonna drop it in right by the eggs to start. And like I said, always going in kind of a circular motion. And the paint will bleed out where you've added water so you don't have to worry about telling it where to go too much. but I like the variation of letting it bleed out on its own versus just adding straight onto the painting. So we're gonna now feather it out towards the outside by adding those brush strokes I was telling you about. So you're kind of making your way around, always keeping very uneven lines. And I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray and actually add Payne's Gray right near where the eggs are. So where the eggs are, we're gonna have some that kind of wrap around like that. And what I like about the Payne's Gray is it bleeds really well and it also isn't quite black. I find black sometimes is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna take a little bit of raw sienna and actually start building my way out now. So now I'm just taking a brush and adding it straight to the paper. I'm not worrying about adding clear water first. I'm doing kind of a mix. I might add a little bit of clear water, but um, you certainly don't have to. Now you're, it's just about adding those branch-like motions with your brush. And as it dries, we're going to be adding more detail. So this, at this point, it's going to seem a little bit messy. But as we continue to make our way around, it'll have more and more twigs and definition. So here I'm going to actually add a little bit of clear water. And then when I come in with the Umber, raw umber, it'll bleed. We're gonna come around with Payne's Gray again, but for now, I'm just trying to get quite a bit of color and I'm varying what I use on the brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of the yellow ochre over here. Just throughout. And so I do feel like that's a really good base coat. Um, but the important part is to just like keep adding as you're going. So now I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray and actually come back and start redefining again. So I wanna define a little bit of these eggs. I really want them to pop, so I'm gonna add 
little bit of definition around them and because my page is still wet they will bleed the black will or sorry paints gray will bleed nicely don't worry too much about having it perfect if you hold your brush kind of loosely like this it actually gives you wavier more imperfect lines and that's really what you want These are sticks, so they're not going to be perfect. And getting your lines to go wider towards the nest is what you want. So as you're working on it, your painting will be drying and that'll give you more definition with some of these sticks. So you can see over here, it's quite dry. So now when I go in, I can add some finer lines and they won't blend in because it's fairly dry. And you don't need to go too crazy. I mean, sometimes less is more with this. So now we're just moving our way out. I kind of want to have some lines that don't make any sense, that aren't connected anywhere. Mixing in Payne's Gray with a little bit of the brown so that it's not only gray, it's like a warm gray. This just helps it represent the center of the nest because it is darker. The outside I'm quite happy with, so I don't think I'll fuss with it a lot more. I might add some white highlights. I have been thinking that this would be a fun one to add some gold to. If you don't have gold paint, that's totally okay. It's just something I have on hand for some projects that just feel like they could use that little pop of gold. So I'm pretty happy with that. I want to add some splatters now. Um, I feel like the texture could just be really nice with the brown. Adding a bit of teal. And then I'm going to vary some of the size up by adding some clear water over top of them. I'm not gonna do too many. Some more brown over here. If it's still wet, they'll bleed nicely in with the branches and it can be a really nice textured effect. So where it's wet, I'm adding a few more than I normally would just because I know they'll bleed in. You won't see too many. You don't want to go too crazy on the background. I think the focal point needs to be those eggs, so. You can see where I'm adding them. You can barely see them. It's more just about getting a little bit of texture in. I'm going to use some Payne's Gray now. The Payne's Gray does lighten a lot as it dries, which is totally okay. So we're gonna allow, allow this to dry 100% and then we're gonna go back and add a little bit of detail using a bit of white gouache as well as some gold paint. All right, so now that it's completely dry, I'm going to go in and add some gold paint and some white paint like I mentioned earlier. So I like to use this poster paint. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, this is a white poster paint. It's quite thick, so it goes on fairly opaque as opposed to some of the gouache. Um, but you can use white gouache as well. And then I have this gold paint. I picked it up on a whim. It's called Solar Gold. It comes in a powder. And I basically put it in my ice cube tray and wet it a bit. And then you can paint it on wherever you like. So I'll leave both links to, uh, in the video description. So for the gold, I'm going to go in and just 
add subtle little hints. And basically when it dries, you'll just see, the painting will just have a little sparkle. It's nothing crazy. It's hard to see on camera because this is such a subtle effect. But it's just something I feel like suits this piece. All right, so clean my brush off really well. You wanna have clean water before you use white paint. And actually, I'm gonna use my liner brush for this. And I'm going to go in and highlight some of the little branches. So using a tiny fine brush, I'm gonna be going in and adding a few little highlighted branches. There's not a lot of rhyme and reason to where I'm going. just have little gleams of light on them. And then I want to do the same thing right near the egg. I want to just define certain parts of it so that it pops against the background. So I'm just kind of going around them and adding the thinnest white line just the tip of the brush. And then I'm going to add a few little highlight spots on the eggs where I want. And then there's here, accentuate more here. And it'll, it will become a little more translucent as it dries. It's not going to be opaque the same way like an acrylic paint would be. adding some spots too on the egg using a more watered down so if you have more water in with this poster paint it's going to act as sort of a watercolor so you can see here it's not going down super opaque i think it's almost done i just there's just a few spots i just want to add a little more detail but being done is sort of an individual thing. You're gonna know when it feels balanced and right. Okay, just a couple more here. And to me, that looks complete. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. And it is done. So if you enjoyed painting this along with me, just be sure to hit the subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun. I hope you love your painting and don't forget to have fun with watercolors. They're, they're challenging, but they can be a lot of fun. So the more you practice, the better you'll get. Check out some of my other videos for some tips. And thank you so much for painting along with me.